Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be uh, learning about DC to AC inverters. We will be learning about different circuits and different topologies of inverters. As we already know or we have already heard, inverters are the circuits that convert DC to AC. We have seen inverters, we might not know them. Uh, if we have IPS at home or maybe UPS, they, they run on batteries. That is, they convert the voltage of the uh, battery, that is, the DC voltage into an AC voltage. The first variance of inverter that we will be learning about is a single phase half bridge inverter. So, this is the circuit of the half bridge inverter. Uh, let us look at how this works. This Vs is the DC voltage source that we are using. And what happens is uh, there are two capacitors involved, involved, two capacitors and two resistors involved. They divide the Vs into two parts. This part is 0.5 Vs and this part is 0.5 Vs. So theoretically how it should work is when this switch is on, the, this becomes short circuited. As a result, the uh, voltage across the load should be here plus here minus Vs by 2. And again when this switch is on, this acts as a short circuit and the voltage across the uh, the voltage across the load should be <coughs> here plus here minus Vs by 2. So theoretically when T switch T2 is on we get a positive voltage of Vs by 2 and when the uh, we are considering this is the plus side this is the minus side and when T1 is on we get a negative voltage minus Vs by 2. Again considering this this node as plus and this node as minus. So as a result, uh, by switching on T1 and T2 at definite intervals, we get plus Vs by 2 and minus Vs by 2. So this is an alternating voltage or AC voltage. One thing is to be noted there, there is a time delay between these two. This time delay is provided and uh, provided so that at no point of time both T1 and T2, both the transistors are not on. If both the transistors have been on, then what have what would have happened? The voltage, uh, the voltage source would be shorted in this direction, and the transistors would catch fire. As a result, there is a time delay between switching on the two transistors. This time delay is called dead time. Time delay is called the time. So theoretically, this is a very good circuit. Uh, single phase half phase rectifier is a very good circuit, which gives a voltage in between Vs by two to Vs by two. But it has some uh, definite, uh, it has some definite drawbacks. First drawback that it poses is theoretically the voltage should be Vs by two to minus Vs by two. That is overall voltage swing we get equal to Vs, but we want ide we want ideally the voltage to range from Vs to minus Vs. We are not getting it in, in this circuit theoretically, and practically also there poses some issues. What are the issues? Suppose the switch T1 is on, we are supposing, and we have plus minus V output here. Suppose the switch T1 is on, then the circuit basically becomes here we have Vs. Then here we have a resistance. Since it's a DC circuit, we are neglecting the capacitor. This is 10K. Then we have this resistance. And the switch over here is short. And again, we have this resistance. And okay, this, thing, this connection will not be there. So the circuit essentially becomes this. This is also 10K. Now so let us suppose that the, the output resistance is equal to 100 ohms. So if the output resistance is 100 ohms, this 10k and this 100 ohms are in parallel. The equivalent resistance almost becomes 100 ohms. So what the circuit actually essentially becomes like this, where there is 100 ohms here and 10k here, and we are taking the output. Uh, we are taking the output across this and this and this point that is we are taking the output across plus minus this region 
so the output becomes very low because because of potential divider law the output v output actually becomes vd c into 100 by 10.1 so this becomes the v output which is actually very low as a result uh, theoretically the output though ranges from minus vs by 2 to vs by 2 practically the output actually is very very low and this is why this circuit is not really usable or useful for designing an inverter in order to solve the problems of a uh, single phase half bridge inverter single phase full bridge inverter was introduced here in instead of the two switches we have four MOSFET switches uh, what happens is uh, when MOSFET 1 and 2 are on, current flows in this direction. So if we consider here plus and here minus V output, we'll sorry, if we consider here minus and here plus V output, we'll get a negative voltage because current flows from minus to plus. So we get a negative voltage here. And when these two switches are turned on, current flows in this direction. As a result, we get a positive V output voltage here. We can see current flows in this direction causes a negative voltage, current flow in this direction causes a positive voltage. The output voltage, uh, the polarity of the output voltage is actually dependent on the convention that we choose. We have kept the plus at the right side and minus at the left side. As a result, when MOSFET 1 and 2 are on, we get negative voltage. When 2, 3 and 4 are on, we get positive voltage. If we had chosen the polarities, in the opposite direction, we, we would have got the opposite result. And again, here we have introduced some dead time for practical issues. Uh, but for theoretical purpose, theoretical calculation, we will consider that there is no dead time involved. Now, what are the advantages of the full bridge inverter? Firstly, there is no external resistance in action. As a result, these switches are these switches all are lossless and there is no voltage drop across that. So entire voltage VDC is actually dropped across the load. So as a result, we get in this case we get plus VDC, and in this case we get minus VDC. And this is not only in theoretical perspective, in practical perspective also, the voltage swing is from minus VDC to plus VDC. And actually, in actual, uh, the MOSFETs are very small on resistance, uh, say about uh, in the range of milliohms. So that does not really affect the operation of the circuit and the voltage swing is almost from minus VDC to plus VDC. So we can say single phase full bridge rectifier uh, inverter is advantageous in that respect. But there is an added disadvantage involved. The disadvantage is we know the AC signals that we use are sinusoidal. If we are considering to this, we can write as this. Sinusoidal, but in this case, there is, these are not sinusoidal. These are square waves, and square waves, uh, as we know, these kind of sinusoids contain only one frequency, but these square waves contain multiple frequencies, which we can find out by performing Fourier analysis. So the load that we use are designed for a single frequency, and when multiple frequencies are there, there is all, there is much noise, and this noise affects the performance of the load. And again, at very high frequencies, some different kinds of loads sometimes do not work correctly and uh, give faulty results and uh, faulty uh, outputs or the loads do not work or they switch off. As a result, high frequency components also poses a problem in these kinds of inverter. But these kinds of inverter are generally used in homes and these are very suitable for uh, lights and fans and the general loads that we use in our day-to-day -day life. Now, let us uh, perform frequency analysis uh, of the full bridge inverter to see how uh, uh, see how uh, different frequencies are coming into play. Uh, we know that V output or anything can be written as a sin sin sum of sinusoids can be written as a0 plus summation of a n cos omega n plus summation of b n sin omega n. We have known this is the expression for Fourier series and as we can see if we draw it here our output was something like this. At first we have negative 
then we have positive we are not considering the dead time so if we uh, consider the minus negative part two we can see the output voltage is anti-symmetric output voltage is anti-symmetric another thing is there is no dc com component involved this is pure ic if dc component is not involved this becomes zero in case of pure ic if it is anti-symmetric this also becomes zero then only factor that uh, comes into play is this and we know pn is equal to integration 1 2 by pi integration of 0 to pi uh, vdc sin n theta d theta this expression comes from Fourier series uh, you have already learned Fourier series in different courses so from this we get 1 by 2 vdc by pi into uh, 1 by n theta 1 by n minus cos n theta uh, the integration will go from 0 to pi so from that we get 2 v dc divided by pi n then cos n theta become uh, minus cos pi plus cos 0 we know cos 0 degree is equal to 1 so from that we get 2 v dc by pi n hmm. 1 sorry n pi 1 minus cos n pi now if p is odd if if n is odd then what happens if n is odd so if n is odd what happens uh, cos n pi becomes uh, uh, cos n pi becomes equal to cos pi we know cos pi is equal to minus 1 and what we get we get uh, 2 v d c divided by Pn is equal to 2 Vdc divided by pi n into 1 minus minus 1 is equal to 4 Vdc divided by pi n. If n is even, then cos n pi we are considering uh, it becomes cos 2 pi or 4 pi whatever that is the value is 1 as a result 1 and 1 get cancelled uh, here the value of cos n pi will be 1 and this one these two ones will be cancelled and b1 bn will be equal to 0 so what we get is uh, we will get uh, vdc sorry we get v output from this expression we will get v output is equal to summation of uh, 4 vdc divided by pi n sine 2 pi f n t when n is odd so we can see our fundamental frequency will be of highest component at uh, fundamental frequency is when n is equal to 1 and when the value of this n increases uh, the output voltage will get decreases so we'll get frequencies of uh, fundamental frequencies and its odd odd harmonics uh, third harmonics fifth harmonics will get the odd harmonics here and the value of odd harmonics will gradually decrease so we can say that high frequency components will be low and the fundamental frequency or the lowest frequency component will be high as a result we can use it in uh, in most of the voltage source that we intend to we intend to use this in we remember this is this is actually the output voltage expression so output voltage is a square though output voltage is square wave it can be written in terms of sinusoids uh, because uh, of uh, because anything can be written in terms of uh, shifted sinusoids according to the series this is the expression of the output voltage that's all for this lecture thank you so much in the next lecture we will be learning about uh, 
இதுல நீங்க பக்ஷி பேசிட்டு வர்றது